Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And right now I have three verses for you that I liked very much. They're in the first epistle general of John. Chapter 2, um, verses 15 to 17. And I like them because they provide direction, immediate direction about the kingdom of God and how to how to the, be in the eternal light of God. And it goes like this. Love not the world, either the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So here, so here it's saying, you have to choose. You've heard this before in the Bible, right? You have to choose whether, whether to love the world or to love God the Father. That, that the love of the Father is, is capable of, of, of li lighting up the heart of a person that loves the Father. But if we turn our attention and, and our love to, to the creation, to the things of creation, then, then it becomes much more difficult. We have to be very single-pointed. What do they say? To have one eye, right? We have to be very single-pointed about what we do in life, because life is kind of short, you know. So... Reading onward. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now this is good, because it explains what, what is meant by the world and by mammon. Right? So, um, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Okay. And the pride of life. Interesting, huh? A very poetic. Huh. Lust of the flesh most likely would be mm, sexual, like desire, um, that is not tempered by chastity or, or, or love for, say, one spouse. That's what I guess. You may have other ideas. Lust of the eyes. That might be the desire for possessions, the desire for riches and wealth. And the pride of life. I think that has to do with, with feeling that you're somebody in the world, you know. You have the social status. You have certain a certain arrogance of being a particular way in the eyes of other people. Yeah. And so, breaking that down, um, lust of the flesh, according to Arthur Powell, a theological society compiler, uh, is, it's like um, the desire elemental I've discussed in uh, another blog. And um, Arthur Powell's associates always said that that we have a desire elemental so that we can relate to this reality this world but we but the spiritual person needs to be constantly training and containing that that energy so that it it serves the purpose of the soul in 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 this incarnation lust of the eyes the thing about wealth is that um if we, um, if we think of it as something that we possess, and lands too, as something that we possess, instead of something that's assisting us for the moment in our soul purpose, we get snagged up on that stuff, you know. Um, it's better to think of the things that we see as uh, uh, a, an ever-changing um, uh, soul lesson, that we're learning than to think of them as things that we possess because that snagginess that kind of prevents us from learning our soul lessons that's what I think and the pride of life uh, you know what do we really have to be proud of when life is is given to us by God you know we get it from God and, and eventually give it back to God so so this pride of life consists of a kind of snagginess too it's like we get stuck on what's happening at this very moment and forget the beginning and the end of it you know which is 
the godliness from which we come and to which we go. So it's short-sightedness, I think, and, and stuckness in the flow of the river of, of eternal life, you know. Uh, trying to... Okay, last, um, last verse. And the world passeth away, and the last thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Nice, huh? So, so he's saying all this snag stuff, it will come to an end, right? The minute we pass on, none of that stuff will exist. But the desire for it also will pass away because the desire elemental leaves us at the moment of death and like goes off to be with somebody else, I guess. And, uh, but, but he that, that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So, so this is the main point here. The point is align now with, with the will of God. Right now, do God's will in this lifetime, even though all these distractions exist, right? And uh, it, when it says abideth forever, it doesn't mean after death, I feel. You know, you could consider the minute that we align with the will of God, we are already in the eternal flow, right? So death holds no fear, right? Because it can, it, we continue after death uh, in the eternal, eternal flow of the will of God. Yeah, very nice. Well, see y'all later. Take care.